The convicted felon, insurrectionist, traitor, adjudicated rapist and compulsive liar is neck and neck with a lifelong law enforcer, former prosecutor and incumbent vice president presiding over record low unemployment and a booming US economy. Hmm, something doesn't add up. It can't just be because Kamala Harris is a female and a person of colour that she isn't light years ahead of her insane rival. I mean, a female candidate won the popular vote in 2016, so America isn't as misogynistic as you might think. So who is it that tells us that Donald Trump is really that popular? Oh, that's right. It's Trump. Trump hasn't stopped telling us that he's going to win the election and that Kamala Harris is mentally unstable, the ultimate in projection. Dozens of mental health professionals have evaluated Trump from his millions of appearances and said that he's not fit for any job, let alone the presidency. Apart from The Apprentice, Trump has never been employed because he's unemployable. And when he gaslights his supporters by claiming to bring back jobs or close the border or execute drug dealers, nobody has had the opportunity to ask him how. How, Mr. Trump, do you intend to do these things? Don't you think that if it was that easy to bring down inflation, somebody might have done it by now? So we can't trust the news media to hold him to account, and he won't be interviewed by legitimate journalists. He cancelled his 60 Minutes interview. He refuses to be fact-checked. This is all the authoritarian playbook, by the way. Putin doesn't ever get interviewed unless he's writing the questions. So, in addition to the promise of authoritarian policies, going after his perceived enemies, shutting down the plethora of criminal investigations, taking away people's broadcasting licenses, banning abortion on a national scale, ending the Ukraine war by handing it to Putin, etc., etc., there is a blanket block on access to the real Donald Trump. He only appears in fake set-up scenarios, like wearing an apron in McDonald's and pretending to give a shit about people from a group of pre-selected Trump supporters who happen to be driving through to collect their Happy Meals. Can you see what's going on here? He's faking his own popularity. He's paying for polls that make the race look tight. He's not popular with the majority of voters. It's just that he tells us constantly that he is, so much so that we actually start to believe him. So much so that the corporate media are too lazy to question him, too lazy to fact-check him. So they just sane-wash his insane authoritarian speeches and give him the credibility of normalization. Trump is not normal. He's dangerous. Vladimir Putin clearly has something on Trump, whether it's the PP tape or something more sinister, but either way, there's compromat. He won't hear a bad word said about Vladimir Putin. Think of it, a former president compromised by Russia running for president again, and everybody behaves like that's just normal. There is clearly a collective mental health problem in the United States that nobody wants to talk about. Trump, along with Russian bots and hackers and interferers, have normalized this Republican candidate, a candidate that is anything but normal. And that's why the polls seem so close, because they are manipulated. That's why he appears to be neck and neck with Kamala Harris, because Trump is a distraction. He's a sideshow, like a Victorian freak show. He's interesting because he's a clown, not because he's a winner. The media love him because he sells his box office with his makeup and his corset and the lifts in his shoes and his hair transplant. It's all pretend. So to watch him serving food through the second window of McDonald's makes us feel sorry for him, like he's being humiliated. He doesn't care about those people. Him joking that he might come back to do it again because he's having such a good time. It's a lie. It's populism. He doesn't want to work, he doesn't want to campaign, he just wants to play golf. He keeps telling us what a wonderful life he had before he ran for president. He's even said, I don't care about you, I, I, just, I just want your votes. The guy is a phony, a lazy, burnt orange phony who thinks it's normal to steal an election because he's been stealing all his life. Only nobody has ever caught him before, but now he's been caught. Caught by all of us who see through him. We can see that every answer he gives is made up. 
Every lie he tells is an obvious false statement. He thinks everyone is as dumb as he is and that he can just say anything and people will believe him because this is what he's been doing for years. But we don't believe him. He lied today about the cost of installing a bunch of electric vehicle chargers, said it would cost billions and trillions. The guy's an idiot. And if people buy his rhetoric, what does that say about them? It says we've lost all grip on reality. But that's his plan. That's Steve Bannon's plan. That's Putin's plan. So as much misinformation as you can so that nobody knows what to believe. Do you believe that wind turbines give you cancer? or windmills, to quote Trump accurately. Nothing he says is true, literally nothing. And hence the polls that he has commissioned aren't true either. They are skewed to hide his lack of popularity so that when Kamala Harris wins, they can claim it was rigged because the race was too close to call, but it wasn't. Those were their fake polls, as fake as everything that Trump says and does. Nothing is what it seems with that guy. He literally is wearing clown makeup. Trump's efforts to fake his popularity in Arizona and Nevada may have been compromised this week by canvassers working for America PAC, who have reportedly used GPS spoofing to falsely claim that they have knocked on doors when they haven't, according to sources in a leaked video. Now, this could have significant consequences for Trump, as America PAC is responsible for much of the Trump campaign's grassroots work in key battleground states where voter turnout is expected to be critical to the election outcome. A bootleg video made by an American PAC canvasser in Nevada demonstrates how easily canvassers can manipulate their locations to fake door-knocking efforts. The video details how canvassers use GPS spoofing apps to make it appear as though they visited the homes of Trump supporters, input fake survey responses, and adjust answers to cover up the deception. The issue of suspicious door knocking in America PAC's field operations highlight the risks involved in outsourcing campaign ground efforts. Paid canvassers, unlike traditional volunteers or campaign staff, they just don't have the same level of commitment to their candidate's success, making fraudulent activity far more likely. Elon Musk has reportedly donated $75 million to America PAC since its creation three months ago. Approximately 30 million of that has been allocated to the ground game operation aimed at mobilizing Trump voters, while the remaining funds have been directed towards digital and mail advertising for Trump and other Republican candidates down ballot. And then there's the appearance at his Doral Golf Course in Miami on Tuesday, which was promoted as a roundtable discussion with Latino leaders. And her name is Carolina. She's beautiful and she's sweet. But in reality, it was a series of glowing speeches from his most loyal Latino supporters interrupted by Donald Trump with lengthy rants filled with grievances and insults and xenophobia about immigration. Very little of the conversation actually touched on issues directly impacting Latino voters. Trump falsely claimed he was leading in the polls with Latinos, despite clear evidence to the contrary. On immigration, he repeated baseless claims that foreign countries, particularly Venezuela, were sending violent gang members and drug dealers armed with military weapons to the US. His comments directed at the business owners and leaders in attendance lacked substantial policy discussion apart from promising to maintain the large tax cuts from his first term. He said, we gave you the biggest cut in taxes in the history of the country and we have a great foundation to build on so we have a lot of companies coming in very fast. What does that mean? And where was the tax cut? He never gave working people a tax cut. He just said he did, but he didn't. He slashed corporate taxes for the wealthiest, but he did nothing for these people. So if his polling is fake and his rallies are faked and his door knockers are fake and his policies are fake, apart from a handful of cultists who go to every Trump event, who is supporting him? None of it is real. The fake outrage about immigration, which then gets repeated on Fox and half a dozen other Trump TV channels and the fake Washington Times or the fake New York Post, we're all living in Trump's false reality that the corporate media is too greedy or too lazy to intervene. So they just let the information flow. They make record profits and hope that Trump sticks around for the sake of their shareholders. 
Trump has made Rupert Murdoch rich. Murdoch is Trump's enabler, his handler. These oligarchs exist for power and money and not much else. Trump needs them, and they need him. And then in walks Elon Musk, who wants a slice of the pie, so he overpays for Twitter by about $30 billion just so he can take control of the narrative. He becomes the town crier of the town square. And when that doesn't work, he's forced to give away a million dollars every day to bribe vulnerable voters into saying they'll vote Republican just to make Trump look good. He's bidding for a senior role in the Trump administration, which means more government contracts for Elon and yet more wealth. Soon, every senator will be driving a government-paid-for Tesla. And in Florida, Ron DeSantis is purging voter rolls. And in Georgia, they're preparing for Trump loyalist election officials to refuse to certify the election if he loses. And so it goes on. The entire movement is built on a fallacy that Donald Trump knows how to make America great again. But they're missing something really important. America is already great with no reason to brag. They don't need to fake their rally numbers or set up photo ops to look real, because they are real. They are the real deal. And like Joe Biden before her, Vice President Harris is a lifelong public servant. She's a law enforcer, not a law breaker. She's a defender of the Constitution, not suggesting it should be thrown out. She wants to restore your rights, not take them away. And she doesn't seek to denigrate asylum seekers or immigrants who want to come to America for a better, safer, more prosperous life in return for their contributions. The media doesn't cover Kamala Harris and her daily campaign events because they aren't sensationalist. They are authentic, actual civic engagement with real voters. This is why the polls aren't telling the whole story. Because like Trump's entire existence, they are fake. And we're not going back to that. Politics should be boring, administrative, and planted firmly in reality. Donald Trump's administration was a car crash reality TV show full of drama, cliffhangers, and tragedy. People actually died. Register to vote, vote early, vote by mail, or show up on November 5th and don't leave until you've cast your ballot. You know what you have to do to beat Trump by a landslide so that he can't claim fraud or election interference or any of that trash. This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to rid America of the pox of Trumpism. Together, we've got this.